In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my top 10 tips for selling DVDs on Amazon FBA. Matter of fact, in the last year, I've sold a little over 5,000 of these puppies, and you'd be shocked at how much some of these items could sell for. So if you're considering maybe adding DVDs or CDs or any other media items, especially DVDs to the mix on Amazon, this is gonna be the video for you. So in order to sell DVDs on Amazon, you are going to have to get ungated. And I actually wanna bring you into my computer and share with you a website that I'm currently using to help people get ungated. It's a little secret I'm gonna put you guys onto. It's called christianbook.com. And essentially what you're gonna to wanna to do is go over to the DVD section right here. Okay, and there's also a area where you can get like discounts and stuff. And sometimes they run specials where you can buy a DVD for like 99 cents. But essentially you wanna go through the DVDs and maybe just scan them with your phone. I'm looking for my phone, I don't know where it is, but uh, you know, pull up your Amazon app and uh, just start scanning DVDs just like this and try to find one that's like selling really quick. And what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to buy 10 of a specific DVD. And once they ship them to you, they're gonna give you an invoice and submit that invoice to Amazon because that's how you're gonna get ungated. So buy 10 DVDs, get the invoice from christianbook.com, get ungated, and then you're gonna be able to sell DVDs. So now that you're ungated, let's move on to the next step. Tip number two when it comes to selling DVDs is to make sure that when you're scanning DVDs and you're analyzing them to figure out do you wanna resell them or not, that you focus on really good ranks. The thing with DVDs is, yes, like they are a bit outdated and they're not gonna be you know, nearly as fast selling as like newer electronics and some video games and books and whatnot, but DVDs definitely sell really well. My tip would be stay under 100,000 rank. Now I have sold DVDs for 125, 150, even upwards to 200,000 rank, but you really only wanna experiment with them a small percentage of the time. So I would say, I would say keep your ranks between 20,000 and 100,000. Now you're probably wondering, well, why not go less than 20,000? Isn't lower better? It is, but there are some risks and we'll cover that soon. Use DVDs, tip number three. A lot of people are gonna wanna know, can you sell new or used? You could sell both, but if you're gonna sell used DVDs, let's take a seat. I've actually got quite a few of them right here, some used DVDs and whatnot. You wanna be careful. Like, I'll be honest, I sell mostly new, but uh, if I do sell used, um, what you're gonna wanna do is obviously, number one, make sure that it's the actual you know, DVD inside of it. Sometimes people will put the wrong DVDs. Sometimes, you know, you'll go through and uh, it could be missing a DVD. So um, open it up, make sure they're all in there. And also one thing you wanna do is test, not test, well you could test, but uh, take a look for scratches. Like there's light scratches on here, you're probably not gonna be able to see it very well on the camera. But uh, I'm okay with light scratches, but if it's, you know, if it's really, really deep scratches, I'll just avoid it. Um, you can definitely test the DVDs as well, but I don't, I'm being honest. You're probably thinking like, oh, you're a crazy person. My return rate is super low. Again, I sell mostly new, but uh, give it a test if you're, if you're not comfortable. Just overall, be careful with used. Um, there's definitely a lot of opportunities with used DVDs. And a lot of people ask, Steve, should I get myself a resurfacer? Like one of those machines where you put it in and it cleans it. I've never used them before. Um, most of the items that I source are from eBay to Amazon. I do find them at thrift stores and libraries, but I'm not picking up like wholesale pallets of like super cheap, you know, DVDs that are only selling for like a couple bucks profit or whatever. Like, I guess I'm not doing enough volume of like random stuff that's out of my control because I'm cherry picking everything. So if it's bad condition, I'll just pass on it. I guess if I was doing wholesale pallets and I had tons of, you know, tons of them, it might be worth it, but I don't, I don't use any of that. Tip number four for selling DVDs on Amazon FBA, and this is my personal preference, I stay away from DVDs that are especially less than 10,000 rank. If it's less than 20,000 rank as well, like I'm really, my red, the red flags are starting to go off and I'm like, I really got to examine this. I'm gonna be sharing some more tips um, in terms of things to look for if the ranks are very low to protect yourself. But as a general rule of thumb, I stay away from ranks really under 20,000, especially under 10K, because they become much more prone to counterfeits. And think about it, if you were a bootlegger or a counterfeiter, would you be going after DVDs that, you know, 
have a 70, 80, 100,000 rank that are selling 10, 12 times a month? Or would you be going after DVDs that are fast selling, that are selling hundreds of thousands, they're newer, they're current, they're popular, they're trending, people are buying tons of them. Those are the ones that are gonna get bootlegged. And the truth is, I could sit here and act like, you know, because I've sold thousands of DVDs that I'm an expert and I know what's real and what's fake. It's hard, it's really, really challenging to know because especially if you're selling new DVDs, I mean, some of the artwork, some of the graphics, the quality is perfect, but you're not gonna know until you open it up and you know you can put it in your computer to test it out. There's different ways to be able to test it out and whatnot and based on the quality of the video, but as a general rule of thumb, to keep your account safe, under 20K rank, under 10K rank, be very careful or just avoid them entirely. Tip number five when selling DVDs on Amazon is be very wary, be very careful of DVDs that are being sold as new, that are wrapped, that don't have the security seal on them. So if you take a look at these two uh, new DVDs, can you see right here where we have the security seal? Now, not all DVDs have them, okay? I've sold thousands and I've studied it and researched it. Some DVDs don't have that security seal. Some are just wrapped like this, like this one right here, uh, Veggie Tales you can see that it's wrapped. And uh, this is kind of sketchy. I actually put this aside. I'm not gonna sell this as new because it just looks resealed. Now, another thing, oh, this is interesting. Beware of like a sticker that's underneath the seal because that's another sign that it's probably resealed and it might not be new. So I don't know what some eBay sellers do or I don't know why people reseal them or whatnot, but you know, if you wanna be safe, pick up the DVDs that only have the security seal on the outside to ensure they're new and of course, authenticity. All right, so we shared tip number five, which was check out for uh, the, the security strip. And then I also warned you guys about reseal DVDs. What I wanna cover now is really important and that's to beware of DVDs that, so if you're doing eBay to Amazon flipping, this is tip number seven. You see right here, Zach, where it says 47 sold. Mm -hmm. So what some sellers are doing is they're, they're selling items that either they have multiple quantities available. So say for example, someone on eBay was selling this and they had 20 available. Maybe you can buy this for 20 and it's selling for 80. That's too good to be true. That's just, that's, that's, that's a scam. That's gonna be a counterfeit right there. Stay away from multiple quantities. Now, if you're thrifting and whatnot, if you're finding items or maybe you're at a garage sale and you're like, all right, I know this is probably not bootleg or fake. It's at a garage sale. They told me they were a collector. It was the sons. They moved to college, whatever. And you're like, this is real, but they're all like seven, eight, 12, 14,000 rank. They're super fast sellers. What you can do is literally go into eBay, type that item in and see if there's sellers who are selling that specific item. Obviously this isn't the same item as this, but just give an example that have multiple quantities sold or multiple quantities available. That's a really, really um, bad sign. Okay. And another thing you could always do as well is you could actually go into the Amazon listing. I highly recommend doing this and you could actually take a look at the ratings and the feedback and you could take a look to see if people are complaining about counterfeits. So what I'll do is go to like most recent and I know Amazon's full of like fake reviews and stuff, but when people are upset, they're gonna let you know. Um, and they'll complain that like the items aren't working properly, the screen is like poor quality. And that could be a sign as well. Like you could even, I think you could even search for, I'm trying to see if you could search for a specific word. I mean, I guess you could do control F and hit counterfeit, or you can hit like um, search for the word fake and see if people are complaining in Amazon that this is fake. That can definitely help you. It's not perfect, but those are some ways to add an extra layer of protection. We got to do the shake test. Tip number eight, okay? And I know it was funny. I had uh, one of my buddies who has a YouTube channel. He called me out because um, I have a script that I send to um, eBay sellers before I buy and I, I tell them to do the shake test because when you're selling a DVD on Amazon, it's gotta be brand new. It's gotta be in you know, excellent condition, especially you know, a lot of the DVDs I sell are for 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 bucks. Yes, it's crazy, I know. Don't believe me, go look it up. Like DVDs sell for that much money, especially the rare ones that are discontinued, but do the shake test, listen up. So this one's not, too, oh, you hear it? So that's a DVD that's loose inside. I have tested selling these, they get returned. They get returned very often. And now on Amazon, where there's a return, I've gotta eat the cost. They're probably gonna open it up, destroy the whole package. Now I have an item that's worthless. Do the shake test. 
If it's shaken inside, I would pass on it and just sell it as used because they could get damaged inside. So that's the tip, do the shake test. And if it's shaken inside, stay away. Tip number nine, now I know this isn't a DVD, this is a CD, but this was the best example I could give you. Beware of manufacturer discards, okay? So can you see this little hole right there in the corner? Typically with CDs, what manufacturers will do when they, for some reason they have to like discard products, I don't know if it's a deal with like the company or whatnot, but they drill a hole into the actual item or where the UPC is or the barcode, they'll literally like, pretend this is like a knife, right? They'll just slash through it and you'll see a slash through it. You can't sell that as new. If you see that, I don't even know if you could sell it as used with the terms of service. Maybe you can, maybe someone could help me out down below. But beware of those. When I first started reselling, I would see these holes drilled and I was like, what's going on? Or sometimes they'll slice the side on the CDs or the DVDs, but a lot of times they'll, they'll slice it here. Um, I never knew what it was. Now I do, I just stay away from those, okay? Um, another warning as well for all my eBay to Amazon flippers out there, be careful that what a, what a lot of uh, eBay sellers will do is they'll cover it up with a, uh, with, with like a little F and SKU label, like a blank Rolo label, and they'll, they'll cover it up so you don't see it. And while I guess it's not a huge deal, like if I was buying a DVD or a CD, like I really wouldn't care. But when you start getting into like the higher end CDs and DVDs that are selling for 40, 50, 60, 70 bucks, people do care and they will return it and you're gonna eat that cost, they're gonna open it, it's gonna be destroyed and you're gonna be out 10, 20, 30 bucks, whatever you paid for that item. So beware of manufacturer discards and avoid them like the plague. Tip number 10, actually I got a bonus tip first. Be careful for uh, like the plastic being ripped. I just noticed it with this one right here, you see this? It's ripped. So be very careful. Um, you could, if you wanted to, you can just patch it up if it's just a tiny, tiny rip, but something big like this, I, I wouldn't sell this as new. But the, the last point that I wanted to make here, and I know I've already shared with you guys these DVDs, I don't even know what these are selling for because um, I put them aside, but uh, like if you're worried about counterfeits and like IPs and stuff like that, obviously it's the fast selling stuff, it's the popular selling stuff, but I've noticed the DVDs that have given like my students and people I know and even myself a little bit of issues in the past because we don't have invoices and obviously like we'll talk more about that in a second, but it's the complete series uh, DVDs, like complete series right here or complete third season or complete fifth season. Like those are the ones that are faked, counterfeited the most, multiple quantities sold, uh, mul multiple quantities available. If it's too good to be true and you can buy it for 30 and flip it for 90, like there are situations like that. I've found things like that, but when it comes to stuff like this, if it's too good to be true, it really is. So just be really, really careful with stuff like this. I can't say it enough. Like you've got to keep your Amazon account healthy and safe. You've got to do whatever you can to avoid IP complaints. I'll put a link down below to IP alert. I've got a $30 off coupon. Check that out. IP alert will definitely save your butt. I wouldn't trust Selleramp when it comes to like the IP complaint warnings, although Selleramp's great for a million other things. Um, but we don't have invoices. What does that mean? Like if you're thrifting, if you're hitting garage sales, if you're hitting eBay to Amazon flips, Facebook marketplace, you don't have invoices. So if Amazon ever calls you out to prove that it's legitimate, you're not going to have an invoice. So you've got to make sure to be very careful. Make sure the brand's not on the listing. Um, make sure you're not going after items that are super popular. Make sure that you're really checking to make sure it's sealed. Make sure it's in really good shape. You don't want to get hit with a uh, condition complaints where they say you're selling something new, but it's really used. Um, you got to watch out for that. You got to make sure it's in good shape. You got to make sure like it looks legitimate. There's a lot to go into. You know, it's, it's not an easy topic to cover in just a couple minutes, but you've got to protect yourself. You only have one account. Um, again, I've sold thousands of items on Amazon without invoices, but you've got to do your homework. And there's still always a risk that I almost knocked over my drink. There's always a risk that you could get an IP complaint. But the more you sell on Amazon and the uh, the larger your, your account gets and the more history you have, it's not gonna, you're just not going to get booted or kicked off with just one IP complaint. I'm sure there are some instances where that could happen. But the more you sell, the more volume you sell, the more protection you'll be able to have against an IP or an issue. I've had a couple, I've appealed them, I've got them removed without invoices. So there's ways to do it. But if you're a beginner, especially a beginner, take all these tips to heart, okay? You wanna be safe versus sorry. 
And then as you start to grow, you can make a couple more risks based on your tolerance and whatnot. But with that being said, I appreciate you all. If you guys want any more help learning how to flip items from you know, eBay to Amazon or just selling on Amazon in general, definitely check out the links down below. I've got a bunch of resources for you guys to help you out. And with that being said, much love, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.